Toy Kit has an interesting component called a dynamic grid. I'll show it in action first, then we'll take a look at how it's set up. This is a great component to use for portfolios. Here I've used it to display a gallery of web and print projects. I have four thumbnail images across at wide and medium. When I scale the page down, it will shift to two across at small. The interesting thing is this control bar. You define categories for the images. I've defined two for this demonstration, web and print, but you're not limited to just two. When I click print, the display adjusts to show only the print items. Next, I'll click the web projects, and it displays the eight web images. If I click all, it displays all 13 images. That's pretty amazing in itself, but the dynamic grid also comes with sorting capabilities. Let's view just the web projects. The default sort order is ascending, so they're already sorted in ascending order, one through eight. I'll click the descending link and you'll see them shift from eight down to one. I'll go back to all of the images. It's showing the descending order, which puts the print images first. Ascending will put all the web images before the print images. This looks like it could be pretty complicated, but it's actually easy to set this up with UIKit. Since the dynamic grid is a component, you'll need to link to its JavaScript file which you can find in the JS components folder. It's just called grid and I'm using the minified version. No additional CSS is required for this component. I start off by adding a centered container to hold the portfolio. Inside the container I have a grid or a row set to one full width column. Inside that, I add a nav element with the ID I've named DynaGrid, and it needs a class of UK navbar. I'll fill the rest of this nav section in later. Now I'll add another grid row to contain the image thumbnails. This is where I'm setting the width classes to display two across at the small, one of two, and four across at medium and large. The UK margin top just gives us a little extra spacing above the thumbnail rows. The data attribute that the grid gets its parameters or options from is called data UK grid. The gutter option controls the spacing between the grid images. Here I have it set to 20 pixels. Controls needs to be set to the ID of this nav class. So whatever you name your nav, which I have called DynaGrid, that needs to go into the controls option. When the grid updates itself, by default it uses an animation to do that. This duration option controls the timing of that animation, so 500 milliseconds or half a second. Here's a list of all the options for the dynamic grid. Column width by default auto adjusts. That's the animation, the duration, the gutter, the controls, and we'll look at the filter in a moment. This is the basic structure that I'll use for each of the images in the dynamic grid. Start off with a div, which has two data attributes. Data UK filter, you set this to a category name, whatever category you want this particular image to be in. For my web projects, I'm using the name web. The second attribute will be used to control the sort order. I've set this up with a name I call numeric. You can call the sort whatever you want. 
So I'm using numbers to control the sort order. And this attribute itself is named data hyphen. And this part is what you create yourself. So whatever you call your sort order, that's what goes in there. Within this div, I have a, a figure element. It's assigned a class of UK thumbnail just to style those images. Within the figure, I have an image and a caption. So let's take a look at what this looks like so far. Once you have that first image working correctly, I would just go ahead and copy that for however many items you want in the grid. And then it's just a matter of changing the sorting value, your category names, the image file name, of course, and the caption text. So I've already done that. I'm just going to paste those other items in here. So there's web six, seven, eight, and that's where I start my print items. Notice that I've changed the filter, my category to print. And since I wanted these to show in the sort order after my web items, I just gave them a higher number. So I started the print section with 101. There we see that nice animation as they arrange. Looks like I have a file name wrong. Just copy that in there twice. So this looks great so far. Now all that's left to do is to hook up the controls to the grid. To do that, we need to go back to the nav bar and inside that nav element, first I add a label just to add some informational text. I'm using the view option here. You could do show or display or filter or whatever you want in there. And then an unordered list with a class of UK navbar nav. And this text label just gets a UK navbar content. So it's not an active part of the menu. Each list item in this list has a data attribute of data UK filter equals. And this is where you want to add those categories that you're using on the images. I have the two web and print. What this is going to do is filter out all the images that have the print category, all the images that have the web category. And notice that my all option here, there is nothing inside there. It's an empty string. That means it's not going to apply any filters. It's going to show all the images. To add the sorting capabilities, you add the same kind of structure. Another label to identify the sorting items. Another list with UK nav bar nav. Now the data attribute, instead of a filter attribute, we get a sort attribute. And this is where the numeric comes in. So this text has to match this text. When I click this button, it's going to sort on whatever I've identified as the numeric value for each image in the grid. That gives us an ascending order sort. To do a reverse order sort or descending, use the same text with a colon and the DESC for descending. And that is all there is to creating that. We'll take one more look at it. The web, the eight web images, five print, descending sort, and ascending sort. This dynamic grid is a nice feature to be included with a CSS framework. I'm not aware of any other frameworks that have a component like this one. This concludes the course on UIKit. You should have a good idea now of what you can build with the UIKit framework.